Okay. Show me. Hi, right, fellas, I'm ready to fudge. Oh my gosh! That's not me, that's that cockroach Tony Montana! Do what the black people on that motherfucking wall of fame now! Is that what you want? I want you to be a hockey player! I am a hockey player! All right, I'm not a fucking athlete. This is my fucking way. This is how I win. You go in pieces, asshole. The Where We Gems Movie Podcast. Your home for the most underrated and underappreciated films. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of There Will Be Jen's Movie Podcast. The podcast where we're always giving you the hottest and shittiest takes on movies you may or may not have heard of. I have the man who likes gin and grilled cheese. Don't ask him to go shoe shopping because you'll have a bad time. Tom. What? You like gin? I do like gin. No, the shoe shopping thing. Oh, sure, yeah, fuck that. That's, yeah, I guess that's <laughs> can't true. you like? Can't you not buy shoes in stores? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Now. Well, at least in like Vans, they stopped making them after like size twelve. Like Vans and Converse are the only shoes to me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, actually, pretty much just Vans. Yeah, I like Converse honestly more now. But anyways. We also have the man whose basement looks like a gas station from 2003. He'll slam down a pack of IPAs, then puke it up in a pizza box. Ryan. <laughs> oh. I thought you were talking about me for a second. I'm like, wait a minute. I think it looks like, like a gas station. A it just has a bunch of wow. gas station signs. <laughs> Different. Hard, hard flex. Whatever you got to tell yourself. Yeah, it looks fire. What are we talking yeah. about? You got a nice Coca-Cola one, Ooh. a Sinclair Ooh. gas station, Sunoco, Texas Sunoco. Co. A big monster can. Con leche. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the man who loves hot wings more than anyone I know, hopefully with a scoop of blue cheese. Definitely with a scoop of blue cheese. She's got an OnlyFans promotion going on right now, so guess who's t- hashtag Team Trisha? It's John. What's up? Yeah. I thought you were talking about my OnlyFans for a second. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, look, girl, Kate. Yeah. You have, an, you have an OnlyFans? Yeah, dude. It's free. He's got his feet on there. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his feet on yeah, there. Yeah, it's really funny. Yeah, do you? Is that a real thing? I just didn't even know about that. It's a 100% a real thing. Oh, wow. I would have written some better material then. Yeah, it well, started in Among Us. Yeah, it started in Among Us, and then I had to commit to the bit, so... <laughs> So now I have an OnlyFans with my feet on it. <laughs> we'll make sure we put the link in the description. Yeah. <laughs> Support John. Yeah. And his OnlyFans. It's uh it's a www.onlyfans.com slash foot girl katie. Foot girl katie? Yeah. Uh girl spelled G U R L Katie spit K A T uh E Y. Do you like do you like paint your like toes beforehand to like try to really scam like the like the foot incels? Literally, <laughs> literally, it's it's free to free to uh, subscribe, and the only thing that's on there is a picture of Bowser, um, and it says <laughs> Sussin since 2020. That's the only thing on there. It's really funny. Why not feet? Uh, well, well yeah, the feet, obviously, but you can put we can put Mr. B big on there. Purple foot from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh my God, that'd be hilarious! <laughs> I'm changing that right after this. Yikes. So, anything exciting happening this week? Uh, nothing I really want to talk about on the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fair assessment. Um, I mean, I'm buying a bed. That's probably the most exciting thing this week. Oh, you get it, girl. I know. Right, what kind of bed are you buying? Uh, memory gel. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm never going back. Dude, I'm getting like a sick-ass fucking... Yeah. Get that purple mattress. I, I thought about that, but I really don't care that much about my mattress. I just sleep on it and bang. I got a purple bedspread. Wow. I'll show you my purple spread. With flowers on it. I was, there's actually a company called Purple Mattress. <laughs> I know. Oh, I wasn't yeah. simply saying the... No, I was talking with Tyler. Oh. I was like, I got a purple bedspread. No one <laughs> asked. <laughs> no one gives a fuck. Both. So what's our topic this week? Our topic this week is 
your favorite movie about technology. And we kind of open this up to all types of technology, like maybe medical technology or I don't know what other type of technology, but advancements and things we didn't have before. Who wants to start? Um, I'll go first. Uh, I mean, I saw technology. I wasn't thinking medical. I don't know. What, I don't know where that was supposed to come in. Yeah, honestly. Well, I was. <laughs> well, I was gonna actually you, like go. Favorite off movie. Favorite movie about technology this week. Yeah, so I was thinking medical. Yeah, medical technology. Like, one, there's like, like, one kind, kind of medicine. Many. Yeah, there's many types of technologies. And I was I was going to swap to something a lot more cliche that would have been, like, my top pick, but because of, like, that discussion we had pre-shows. Like, you know, I'll pick this one. Fuck it. I decided to go with uh, Ex Machina. Ooh. 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 Okay. I don't yeah. really love that movie. I'm not like, going to lie. That gave me a little bit. Like, like a technology movie. It gave cool. me a bit of a boner. Ooh. I don't know, maybe, really want, maybe that's something I could watch again, but I really yeah. didn't care for the time I saw it. I didn't yeah, like his next movie lot. either. Yeah. I've never seen and it. And there was this movie he made after it, Annihilation, that I also did not really care for. Isn't that the one with Natalie Portman? Yeah. That movie fucking got blew. A, he's got a really good concept, but I just did not like it. I felt like the ending was so weak. The ending was fucking yeah. garbo. Yeah, I'm not. A, I really don't like the Oscar Isaac guy either. I think that guy's like one of the most overrated leading men in Hollywood. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I like him. Yeah, I like that's him too. Guy Courtney. I just don't really like a lot of the movies he's in, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, maybe that's uh, why. Yeah, I like him in Star Drive, Wars. but he wasn't the lead, obviously. Star Wars. I don't like him in Star Wars, honestly. You can go fuck yourself. What? It just doesn't do it for me. He's cool. Pilot. He's cool. Pilot guy. Who's kind of who's like. I like him more than Han Finn. Solo. I like Finn more than him. Okay, Finn's you can shut the no, oh, yeah. Um. So the podcast is going to go on with just um. Tom and Ryan and myself. Uh, Tyler's Fish Star Wars podcast. Yeah, oh, Star God. Wars. Oh, Finn- let's talk about the 10 new Disney shows they announced. I, I mean, I would, but I'm talking about that on my other podcast Saturday. Ooh, okay. Yeah, sorry. There you well, this isn't it first. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. So, Joe, right. what's your favorite technology movie? Um, I'm actually going to say Terminator 2. Electric Bugaloo? Yeah, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, because it deals with, like, obviously the fallout of advancement in technology. And uh, I've, I've always really liked that movie. It's uh, the uh, best one in the series because the other ones basically blow except for the first one. Um, I mean, the, the show is all right, but I never really watched it too much. But uh, I, that's probably like, my favorite, like, technology based movie. Probably runner up would be Wally if I'm gonna be kind of kind of cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess I like the fallout of from technology more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Terminator One was actually gonna be my audible pick until I swap back. Oh really? Yeah, I much prefer the first Terminator. Well, nobody cares what you think. All right, next. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no one values your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Stop having one. Nobody cares. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> sorry uh wait what was it yeah um so yeah that those are my my pick is the social network yeah i Ooh, knew i fucking knew it i fucking knew yeah. it was gonna be too it's like yeah. i was like does that really count as technology and i think so it, no, 100% I think that counts, counts, yeah i think yeah. that counts as much as mine does for sure <clears throat> especially because it deals with like developing that new technology too um, yeah but oh, i love that movie yeah, that <laughs> like movie. jesse eisenberg plays such yeah. a yeah. Fucking, fucking Spider-Man. I think here's yeah. his mind too, where it's like it's framework, like and like within the bounds of like a technological experiment of sorts. But the movie's not actually about that. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is fine. My movie's pretty much like that too. But Sweet. yeah, it's the Facebook one. movie. Yeah, I like that movie. I thought like that dude that I I didn't know like that guy Andrew Garfield could like actually act. I'd only like seen him in like Spider-Man and this one other movie that wasn't very good. I yeah. thought he was kind of like a... He, like, surprised me in that. I've only seen him as Spider-Man. I hated those <laughs> Spider-Man movies. Fucking Isn't he, like, universally kind of, like, Don, the, the worst Spider-Man? Uh, yeah. He's the best Spider-Man, but the worst Peter Parker by far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'd rather be just yeah. with Batman. Well, I mean, he's not the best Spider-Man. Uh, Tom Holland's probably the best, but... Uh, I, I think Tom Holland's, like, the best Peter Parker, too. Yeah, yeah, but it actually looks like a if, you're, if we're kid. talking about the original two franchises, um, yeah. Andrew Garfield is a better Spider-Man. Like Tobey Maguire was not great at that. 
Um, I think but he was definitely really, better at being Peter Parker. Yeah, I think they hadn't really figured out the action stuff yet. Back yeah, in totally. the first Spider-Man either. So that probably oh yeah, the the pacing on that is like way too fast. The first one, it's like yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Damn, Raimi is just going crazy. He's like, I'm an Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I made Dark Man. Let me make a movie. <laughs> He's a, he just he's directing the new Doctor Strange movie. Oh really? Yeah, yeah dude. Yep. That's pretty cool. They bring him back the same guy. No, nah, they dropped. yeah he dropped yeah. They yeah, were gonna. Uh-huh. But then they were like, do this, and he's like, but I wanted to make this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> no. They're like, this is our this is our money. Yeah, basically. He's like, like right, uh, peace. Wait, it's like, uh, yeah. like it seems to happen a lot. Yeah. Well, because like they, these, they these... want this one to be a big movie, apparently. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's... Seemingly, it's gonna like connect. That it's gonna be like the next like jumping off point for Phase Four. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, all the multiverse the... bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not the next Iron Man too. Oops! All bad. <sighs> Oops. All bad. Oops! Gwyneth Paltrow. Oops. What? <laughs> Goops. Goose, goose, <laughs> awkward and outro. Can we just talk about her pussy candle for a second? No. What? 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 Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about it. I was uh, called paint. It, What's it called? It, it's something like that. Yeah, it's it's. I can't remember what exactly what it's called, but just, it's. it's oh, a, I want to know how does it work. Uh, so yeah, it's so it, it what a word. It's a candle, and it smells just like her vagina, like exactly like it. Apparently. Why would you want to just Allegedly. smell that? Allegedly. I don't know, but people buy it. So, Wait, so the candle that smells, smells like her pussy? Yeah, it's like have a legit thing. The have you see the JonTron videos about Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah, they're great. I'm going to yeah. have to watch them all. Yeah. Oh, they're excellent. They're so she's good. A, she's a total scam artist. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I, like, I watched the H3 podcast, so Ethan made a candle that smells like his butthole. Ha, and he says it's one of the worst things he's ever smelled in candles. <laughs> it's really funny. I almost bought one, but it's seventy five bucks. And I, I want my... a butthole candle. Yeah, I, I don't want my girlfriend one of his hoodies. I hope it comes in on time. What a Teddy Fred. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Those those are pretty pricey. It was on sale, but like I don't like. She was like literally saying the other day that she likes sweet yellow dresses and she wanted like a Teddy Fred like yeah. sweatshirt. Yeah, the color blocking. Oh! The color blocking is like super popular right now. Yeah. All right. All right. So, now what's your movie? <laughs> my movie about technology. It's more. Uh, it's about a movie that. Uh, it's an an advancement in a techn in a surgery where rich people can, they will fake their death and they will make them look uh, and give them look like a completely new person and give them a completely new identity. Oh, face off. Uh, oh, get out. One that comes at its own price. Uh, it's uh, from the year 1966 from director John Frankenheimer, who also made the Manchurian Candidate, and it's a movie called Seconds. Oh, neat. And it's pretty neat. What happened to first? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Ryan. <laughs> Don't make bad jokes, second. Ryan. <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be my new way to call you at work, by the way. So I hope you get used to that. I'll just have my headphones be like, "What, <laughs> bitch? What, Ryan? <laughs> Ryan?" <laughs> All right, <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty dope. I like it a lot. You can buy a Criterion of it, or you can watch it for free on the CBS Prime Channel. Or I can do neither and still live a happy life. Probably. CBS. I don't know about yeah. happy, but. <laughs> All right, let's get into the meat, meat and potatoes of today's feature. It's not for a mainstream audience, and despite a big-name cast and a director who typically stands for quality, I was more depressed by this picture than impressed. Crash was directed by David Cronenberg, the adventurous Canadian filmmaker of Scanners and Dead Ringers fame, and my honest reaction is that the subject of Crash left me feeling empty, not even challenged in the am I hip enough to get it way. Of course, it was intended to leave you cold. I think I liked the movie a lot more than you did. I would like to make it clear that most people are probably going to hate it, be repelled by it, or walk out of it just as they did at the Cannes Film Festival. Why is that? Because it's too tough for them to take. Oh, you mean Roger? Yes, it is. It is. It is. Wait a second. Sex involving wounds and blood and scabs and braces. A lot of people don't want to see it, don't want to have anything to do with it.
Yeah. Tyler. Let's do that. Yeah, talk about this fucking piece of shit. <laughs> wow. So, for this week, we did a little film called Crash from director David Cronenberg from the year 1960, 1996. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, uh, you might be off by 30 Cause... years, Tyler. Caused a bit of a caused a bit of a, a rustle in of the Jimmies when it was released at the Keynes Festival. I wonder why. Uh, it won an award for it won a special award at Keynes. They only give out to films for what was it called? The special Fucking jury prize. Crazy. <laughs> the special jury prize that they give out to fi- to films that for. Something that, that they feel achieved something special. Uh, and for this one, it was for... They used some weird words. One of them was like, for being daring and audacious. And I guess, for the most part, most of the jury like really loved this movie and praised it. But there was a couple people that just thought it was pretty grotesque. And one of them was the most notable member, Francis Ford Co- uh, Coppola. Oh! Uh, the Godfather <laughs> and many other movies. Famous. Nicholas Cage's so, dad. <laughs> And he was the yeah, he's like he's like never bring that shit to my festival again. It's <laughs> <laughs> like what the literally. fuck is this? And they're like, we want to give him a award. And then he was like, one of you has to hand it to him. I'm not doing it. I ain't touching that. Not even a <laughs> single hand. Not a single shot of James Spader penis in the movie. Actually, I saw an interview where some guy tried to like rustle his fingers about rustle his feathers about that. They were like they were like prying at it, but they were coming at Cronenberg for it. Really? Like, well, how, how come there's no male frontal nudity? And he's like kind of digging at these weird angles, and then Spader <laughs> literally steps on that microphone and steps in and goes, "I think I could take it here." Well, and most of the I do get in my <laughs> like he does get naked in this movie. It's not like we're hiding anything. Yeah. And then uh, Jade Spader goes, well, maybe I can step in. Well, sir, I think it's more of a geography program because in most of the scenes I'm having sex, when you're fucking, you don't see the penis. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That took that. Okay, that that sums just, it up. That and the guy like just shut Spader. up. That does. Yeah, like, yeah, he was like pretty hard on him. Like, because he, he knew what he was trying to do. He didn't like it. He probably yeah. said it in Ultron voice, too. <laughs> I don't yeah, think because that's just James voice. Spader voice. Is it? <laughs> Ultron is just James Spader talking normally. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this had a lot of split reactions. Um, couldn't get an R rating. No. And shockingly, yeah, I'll, um, a lot of device in this on this. So, yeah. uh, where, where do you guys stand on this? Um, yeah. So the whole time um, I'm watching this, I'm I'm thinking um, James Spader is a robot, which made this movie actually a little bit more enjoyable for me, um, because it was funnier that he was a, a an android human than an actual person doing all this weird shit. Um, I gotta say, this one was um, it was a movie. That's all I really got to say for now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was that was a movie. Yeah, it was a movie. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll also point out that Ryan watched this entirely at work today. You wow. watched this at work? Yeah. Yikes. I found it on uh, fduppmovies.com. I was about to say, I was like... <laughs> Whoa. Let's jump right into this. So, what about Tom? He said it was a movie. Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, we're all yeah. It's a movie! We're all in contention for it's a movie. Yeah. It will de- uh, most definitely did have cameras and actors. And yeah, yeah, definitely did have porn stuff stars. Happened. Well, all right, so I did have Bush. There's a, lot, have Bush. there's a lot of they've never seen this much Bush in a movie. There's only two scenes of Bush. Yeah, there's, what do you mean? Four? there's like four. Is there? Is there? I don't even remember I- two. I I'm also like one. It's... I'm also watching this on a 65 inch like 4K TV. I mean, like, no, like I'm like really that does that really does help though. It really brings out the bush. But <laughs> just like even, on even just what like on bush. Blu-rays though, because uh, last week we watched the movie I've seen like five or six times. That there's a girl like naked in her room, but the way the lights are, you can never see anything. But like watching it years later, you can see everything on a 4K TV, even with like a Blu-ray. Are you sure it wasn't just because you got glasses? No, I swear to God, because I watched this movie not that long ago. It's yeah, actually you see this at all? No, it was just like more washed out, and the scene's very dark. You've actually seen this. You saw this movie with me in the theaters. 
What movie? Lords of Salem from Rob Zombie. Uh, yeah, Tyler's I glasses. Remember the, I remember the titties in that. No, but there's like in the opening scene, like you cannot see them. Like you cannot see a nipple. It's like way too dark. And like with 4K, like on that TV, like it brightens it up and like cleans it up enough, and you can actually see it. Everything. Tyler's... I think that might just be more of a ba- a light bouncing thing with your TV uh, than. I've seen them if you couldn't see, like, like, you can see in the theaters. <clears throat> well, now I, I see, well, it was like 2000, like like 11 or something, 2012 when it came out. Go ahead. No, it's not that old. Yeah, it is. It really, it's what? like 20. Yeah, it's pretty old. I thought we watched that after I was out of high school. No, it was like 2012 or t- 2013 at like the newest. Well, it's good to know, Tyler, that your glasses are good for seeing and then seeing Bush. Okay, but anyway, aside from Bush to say, yeah, there's a lot of Bush this movie, but <laughs> one thing that I think is really interesting about uh, the movie with like the way they have like the sex scenes is they don't use it like they don't use them like they would in a typical movie, which I think is like the point of the movie. And I don't think any of the scenes are actually meant to be erotic. No, it's more of it's part of the story. Yeah, and yeah. this movie is more of like just like a glimpse of a snapshot in this like deprived like subculture. Yeah, but it, it's not like an anti-film or a pro-film. It kind of just lets you make your own judgment and gives you a glimpse into this world. Yeah. And that's really like what I like Cronenberg for because he's very good at uh, creating these characters and creating these like very strange, like dark, like almost deprived worlds. A lot of the time, mm-hmm. he's got a he's, he's got a very distinct style, and I think this movie really helped, like really accentuated what he's best at with films. Um, it's pretty linear. It's not one of those all over the place movies, but it's one of those. It hits the ground running again. But I will admit that I didn't even understand this until like watching this a time or two. That they don't make it that clear really at the beginning. That you have your film producer uh, James Ballard, which is actually the name of the novelist who called himself that in the book as well. And uh, he's having he and his wife are kind of in an open like detached marriage. Where oh, they yeah. have like a they have a very unenthusiastic sex life, but they kind of like go live vicariously by describing their extramarital affairs to each other. Yeah. So it opens with this set where you see like J- where you see her in some airplane hangar, like putting her tits on a plane and getting getting her getting her tushy. <laughs> And then uh, Mr. Spader eating some Asian ladies' tush. Yeah, that I, that is one of my notes. James Spader eats ass. Yeah. Oh, oh, does he? Yes. They, actually, they they had way more scenes with that same producer, but they cut him because the director said they had too much chemistry and uh, and erased the point of the movie by having those in there. That makes sense. But anyways, uh, it's not until we get that little exposition of them all both separately and they're back in the apartment when they start describing these to each other and. He asked. He just asked her about what she did on the day, and she asked him about the, his secret, like his camera girl at work. And when it wasn't satisfying for him, she says maybe the next one. So you kind of get cued in there. But so does that kind of like hit the ground running thing again, where they're not going to waste time telling you about this stuff. They're just gonna tell you. They're just gonna like let you figure it out later. But I I, I can see where there's already a disconnect right there. It did take me. Like, maybe... T- <laughs> I've seen this movie three times, and I kind of maybe even just the first time understood everything yeah. more than more so than the others. I think this is definitely something you gotta be into, but, like, also, like, re- like watch again to, like, almost dissect everything. Not that, like, there's... I don't think there's anything, like, that complicated about this movie, but I think, like, just, like, the way it's framed, like, this music... This movie's a little bit, uh... What's the right word for it? It's a little, it's a little bit mysterious and uh. Yeah, I would have said not stupid. unclear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but um, yeah, mysterious is a word. Mysteriously questionable. Cryptic. What, yeah. Uh. So, what, what did you find questionable about it? I was just annoyed by that every scene was like a fucking non sequitur. Every scene with a titty. Yeah, titty every, scenes. Every, every scene is just like, we're here now with a different, entirely different set. And a different yeah. titty. Yeah, it was a different really titty. Kind of, 
I, I don't mind I don't it when it happens that. a few times. It's every fucking scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that doesn't bother me. Oh, well. It just makes it hard to, like, stay, like, in, stay, like, paying attention. When it's like, okay, why is he now with, with what's his name? Like, I remember, like, the biggest one was, like, out of nowhere, he's just, like, all, he's just with uh, that other guy's girlfriend. I'm like, what the fuck? What? They're friends, even? Yeah, like at the car yeah. place or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But there's just things girlfriend. like that's not his girlfriend. That's just like some other. What, well, whatever. It was still just. It's just like I. I do know what you're talking about. That, that it was just non sequitur on top of non sequitur on top of non sequitur. Yeah. yeah, that seems a little disjointed. It does. I know what you're talking. I know what you're that's talking. That's how I about. Felt like about she's like a lot of the movie. Yeah. I think that that was intentional though. Well, I believe you. I just don't think it was a good idea. Yeah, it was intentionally <laughs> dumb. It works for me. It uh, yeah. it does not for me. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Speaking of speaking of, do we have a technical term for this like fetish? I don't, I don't think so. I don't really know what to call it. Well, I, I don't really uh, think there's a technical term for it. But we'll go ahead and get into that. Yeah. Um, so it's like uh, that person who's in love with the Ferris wheel, except it's with cars. <laughs> and, and them getting crashed. Yeah, it's crash. Yeah, strange. Yeah, my. I'm kinda, <clears throat> it's very strange. The yeah. novel, I guess, the novel's also extremely strange. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of which, one of my notes is this movie is called Crash. 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 So let's, crash get, into, let's yeah. get into why it's called Crash. <laughs> uh, well, driving home no. from work one night. Uh, James, it's nice that the character and the actor have the same name. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, but no. James is James driving home from work, uh, and he gets distracted and just flies into the other lane, pretty much, and hits another car head on, and that that's a crash. Yeah, Range. I like the guy. Yeah. I like the guy going through the window and just. <laughs> yeah. It looks so good though. It. Like yeah, that like it looks like <laughs> realistic though. Yeah. yeah. That guy, and like when he's just like upside down and the blood's clotting in his hand, I love that. Yeah, that like when that well okay. So when this movie opens with that, I was like, all right, this is gonna be like super cool, you know? Like we got yeah. some, we got some bloody guy flying through a window, and then you have Bruce and like. And then- the newly acquired widow is now taking a titty out. Yeah, yeah. titty. Yeah, instant. <laughs> there was there was two titties within five minutes of each other, and I was like, yeah. I can get behind this. I can I can get There's behind a lot of single this. titty. So yeah. the thing about the single titty, and this is something that's gotten me back and forth between viewings, but I think this is like what I this is the interpretation I've came to now. Is I felt. Maybe I've seen this three times, and I felt like the second time it made me feel like that car crash was intentional, and she was already like a member of this like she already knew about this like underground like subculture, oh, and yeah. that car crash was intentional. But watching it this time, I don't think that car crash was intentional. No, it didn't look like it. But yeah, but I well, I think the point though that they were trying to show you in this scene is that. Like they say throughout the movie, as you like learn on, that it's like it's like a release of energy, like a release of sexual energy, and not necessarily in one direction, but omnisexual or like I don't know what you call yeah. it, just like just a bunch of displaced energy. And I think they were both like, like yeah, I think she felt that energy, and it's almost like in like a daze. She was still feeling like the sexual energy from that car crash, and yeah. that's what that scene's for. You basically just described coming for the first time. Well, I, that's kind of like what yeah. this movie is. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, because I remember my first time. You know, I was like lotioned up, you know, and I remember, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> it was wonderful. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> so James ends up in the hospital. With yeah. his leg and this like robot looking thing with all these pins in his knee. Which um can um can I read my note for this one? Absolutely. Um, um no. I no I know. Uh, um and now we're bruised and broken from our head on collision. Ooh. You're absolutely correct. They yeah. were bruised and broken from their head on collision. Yeah. Ooh. Even dead from some perspectives. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. But, uh, this was this is the next part of the movie annoyed me right after the hospital scene. What the hospital old fashioned? Oh, I was gonna say just James Spader's leg just magically heals. 
he's walking on it. Like, yeah. Oh, like he, like they put it, they put it, they put it in this hey, weird kinda. fucking metal thing, and then the next scene he's just walking around. He's not like, even. <laughs> he's like, I can look at that, folks. I was wondering. He's got like how he's crutch, walking. Though. He's got a crush. He's not actually like walking on his leg. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I meant like the next scene once he gets out of the hospital is already. He's chilling. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's like supposed to be. Brace like, on. But that's supposed to be like. I think that's supposed to be like a couple mm-hmm. months. In the yeah, future. I was gonna say it would have to be like it's at a couple least months. five to seven months. Yeah, because yeah, this is like we're, this is like like we're like yeah. just interviewing tied in together, and I'm making this like guess or not this guess, but like this assertion based off of like Holly Hunter's character in the crash. Because when she meets him again, she does seem to like know a lot more already about like this subculture. She needs yeah. seems to know about what's the. Vaughn's character, uh, Elias Cody's character, Vaughn. Like she, she just seems to like have way more like in like she. She seems to know where to go with this, all this stuff already. Yeah. So I'm thinking yeah. it's like months in the future where she's kind of already explored her own life. It, it would, it would have it's, to be. It's just unclear when it comes to the movie because then they even go to the scrapyard. Yeah, yeah I did. That like, did well, as I was saying that did that did just come to my head where I'm like, well, that's, maybe that's, that's a like, little bit just, more recent then. That's what I mean. Like, it just gets really, it's really muddled. And, like, it may be intentional. I just don't think, I, I wasn't a big fan of it. Yeah. I, I see what you're, I see you complain about, like, the knee. And I don't think it's in muddle. I don't think it's, like, a muddle point. I don't think it was anything they were, like, trying to hide. But I think it's just they want you to buy into movie magic. But you do make a pretty valid point where he's on his, he's on his feet probably a lot sooner than he should be. He has like a knee brace on, not even yeah. like a CVS one. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. knee... <laughs> and like that knee brace is kind of like pivotal to while he's in the hospital because it really it draws the attention of that guy Vaughn who wants to know everything about his crash and wants to take all these pictures of his knee. So no. like it, 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 like that is a significant part. That isn't something you can kind of just gloss over. Yeah. Um. So once so uh, while I was at the hospital, that's why, like as we were saying with the knee, that's. Where he meets our first character, Vaughn, who you don't really see anything about, and he kind of presents himself as a medical photographer. Well, I'll tie in a lot later on, but he sees the other woman in the car crash again, whose husband he killed, Helen, played by Holly Hunter. It's kind of amazing to me they got these people to be in this movie. She was like yeah. hot shit at the time, and like Jane Spader was like a known person at the time. The other girl, and I don't think she's been in much since. Like. I think her career kind of flamed up, but that other girl was a big actress too at the time. But, uh,. Yeah, uh, they 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 kind of meet there, and she's like standoffish about it. So as suspected, he, he he was absolutely his fault, and he killed her husband. But uh, they kind of have their first encounter post car crash. Then, and then James finds his way home, where he's like this, where he finds himself like watching traffic and uh, trying to recapture. I think he he doesn't understand like this experience he's had because like like you guys all said it's like really really strange like fetishizing car trashes and the experience like you get from them uh as he's looking to try to relive this experience he finds his way to a junkyard uh to try to pick up his old car to get his old car look at his old car where he runs into the other woman from the car crash holly hunter's character again who seems less mad at him about the whole killing her husband thing as she was at the hospital and brush it off in a hurry. I did yeah. think that's a little like I kind of like shocked that up to the like how the movie plays out and just the whole experience of like the car crash. Uh, a lot of people in this movie seem pretty devoid of empathy. Empatico. Yeah. So I, I think you can kind of tie that in there right there, but it's almost like she's still going, even though it seems like she's got more gears and knows like this, the Vaughn character a lot more at this point. Um, I think it is, a, it, she it, it does seem like she's still kind of venturing into this world uh, with him. So it, it is a little weird that she's just like over it already. Yeah. So she brings him to like what I think is, like basically, like the coolest part of the movie, um, the part uh, where they're, where she brings him to Vaughn's uh, show that he has, where they recreate real famous car crashes, real fake crashes. I, I think that part crash cars. 
I don't know, that part was dope, though. It's just a wild thing to be like, yo, we're gonna go watch them crash some cars. I thought it was cool right up until the crash, and I was like, well, that was kind of lame. Yeah. It was well, it's like, if they're gonna walk away from it, and they're just trying to recreate these to relive them, and they like, just the experience... Me just expecting things out of David Cronenberg, I thought they were just gonna literally kill themselves. Me too! Like, like <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, that's fucking crazy! How are they yeah. gonna go with next? And then they just, like, walk away, they're fine. Just yeah, that is. They're not even, like, and then also just, like, suspending your disbelief for movie sake. It's like, they're crashing to their full speed without seatbelts. They're flying. I thought it was dope. <laughs> I like it. I like that part. I love like I love how it's very ominous. How he's selling on the microphone. He's like introducing everybody driving. Uh, he gives everybody driving like a believable reason why they would be into this sort of thing. Um, and I love that part where like after the crash, like he starts keeps talking on the microphone, and then like when he says like, and then James Dean became immortal, and the guy raises his hand. I thought that was I. Just, I, I love the way that that part is shot. I thought that movie. I thought that part was. Pretty sick. I thought the guy in the other car was Kevin Bacon at first. <laughs> no, I think that was some random. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately. It wasn't. Yeah. Was, at first, I was like, damn, that's Kevin Bacon, but it was not. <laughs> he just shows up to crash a car and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I just would have enjoyed it if the two people in the James Dean car became uh, windshield wallpaper. <laughs> oh my dead. god, windshield wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been kind of cool like if like the driver actually just died like James Dean did, but it would have been spaghettios with meatballs. Yeah. Yeah, for moving car crashes, there's a lot less spaghetti with meatballs than you would think. Yeah. But yeah. I thought that part was dope. And it kind of like works as a good exposition to like really like bring you into the forefront of these like whacked out crazy subculture of people that fetishize car crashes. Yeah. Uh, we go into this basically like almost I'm gonna call it like a crack house or car crashes. Does that <laughs> sound that off base? That's fair. We're like yeah. literally this guy Vaughn is just so jacked up like watching videos of like test crashes. <laughs> like people that live behind the biggie. Yeah. <laughs> people that live behind the biggie. <laughs> You kind of get a forefront of the people in these, uh, in this like subculture, and what like his, he explains his philosophy about was it reshaping the human body by modern technology, and that his project he's been working on is to live out the philosophy that the car crashes a benevolent psychopathology that beckons towards us. What do you guys think of like the way he he kind of like framed this whole culture? Um, he he concludes that driver. Uh, from the car crash that, uh, like, is like it's it's pretty like predisposed to this lifestyle. The other driver was a stunt car driver. This guy Vaughn, they never really tell you explicitly, but he's obviously been in lots of accidents. Not only that he's creating them, the of the other girl that was in one bag accident that has to wear the brace and has like all the tears on her. That dude's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That dude's batshit crazy. Yeah. Like really wild. Like really wild. <laughs> I think it's interesting, though, how they don't, like, they don't, like, give them a negative light or a positive light, though. They kind of just, like, let you see this world, and they don't tell you how to feel about it. Like, here's a psychopath. You yeah. be the judge. Yeah. I like that, though. Like, I don't like movies that put an agenda on you. I like movies that just, like, present you with, like, information. Just let you make your own conclusions or... Yeah, it was, like, a weird, meeting. sexy nightcrawler. Yeah, that's a... That's a <laughs> <laughs> nightcrawler. That's a weird. That's a way to put it. Yeah. That's so fucking sexy. Yeah. Young Hulk, but sexy. Yeah. So this whole part uh, has James pretty aroused, and after watching his car crash porn and uh, He's being around all the other, <laughs> he goes back home and uh, has this. Most, but probably the most bizarre sex scene I've ever seen in a movie with his wife, where like they're they're going over like we've kind of like beckoned before, where they live like they they were generating their sex life by living it with by like living it with other people and and recounting like the 
the affairs with each other and she has this really weird like uh, super super uncomfortable scene to me where she's like talking to jane spader about like the other guy's penis and like having sex with him and yeah have you ever sucked a penis she's she's like so serious and it's like so grim and she keeps going and that score is playing i think that you guys like the score for this movie i love it yeah i, I think yeah, it's so good it. that's hands down the best part of this movie I like uh there's Hands another down. Like, Yeah, I like this overall the score is like the big standout though. Nobody ever like lists like talks about that when they talk on too many arguing with each other about this, but anyways. Yeah, that's that is like literally the most like uncomfortable sex scene like I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Have you but, seen Blue Velvet? I would rather watch that. I can hear I that just, I can you think hear nothing that about that. I don't, I don't... I'm just fucked up. Nothing about that was uncomfortable to me. <laughs> that was just weird. Ryan's just <laughs> numb. Like, uh, Ryan's just numb to it now. I can literally hear you know the sound made effects. Me the most uncomfortable when she said when she was saying anus instead of just asshole or something. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the only part I was like that was unneeded. Well, what is his anus like? Describe it to me. <laughs> and, then, no. and then she's like, I bet he has a fucked up anus. It's like let me see a, that a kid. Is, is have you, have you, have this you thought about his penis? Like semen? Who showed you this penis? I think his penis is very scarred. <laughs> that part made me laugh. He does say these things. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it didn't make me, like, unnerved or anything. It was just, to me, it was just, eh. I've seen the Blue Velvet. I've seen Blue Velvet so many times that I can literally hear the sound effects from that scene in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I can like hear it and picture it, like the sound of like the trumpet, the fucking like yelling for like Frig. I can literally like hear these sound effects in my head. Like there's just more like there's like so much more of like a fucked up notion once you like learn more about the movie. It's like oh, that uncomfortable scene got more uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah, blue velvet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord. But yeah. So, there's that, and she's kind of dragged into this whole world by proxy of him, but she doesn't seem exactly, if she she seems very pre, she seems very predisposed and, like, happy to, like, be moved into this world, or it doesn't seem like he really has to pull her arm to get her. I thought she was, like, already also in it. No, she wasn't, that's, it's, like, kind of, like, a weird thing, too, where it's, like, she does, she doesn't, she kind of just comes along and is, like, interested in anything, and goes along with, like, the whole car crash liberation and then when she starts getting into car crashes so she doesn't really uh get into any like until like the thick of the movie i guess like past now is about where we can start where uh james starts hanging out with vaughn uh that's kind of where i guess we can go into spoilers Whoa, slow down there, Chief. Looks like we are entering spoiler territory. If you have not seen this film and would prefer for it not to be spoiled, you may want to consider skipping to the timestamp provided below. Thanks for listening. His best buddy, Vaughn. His best buddy, Vaughn, who drives a Lincoln convertible. I hate that guy. I like. I love his character. I hate him. I think he's dope. I think he gets dope. What you? What do you hate about him? The gay stuff. <laughs> He's omnisexual. Yeah, I don't know. He just and there's something about him just rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> he was doing a lot of rubbing. Cult leader. Yeah, he, he reminded me of Jared. He Leto. is a cult leader. He yeah. is a cult leader. Yeah, he literally, yeah. is a cult. Yeah. But I don't know what you're getting out of the cult instead of crashing your car. Like Dennis in uh, Always Sunny. He's like, I, I'll teach you how to get off. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be someone else. And that's how you get on. I like this character. I think he's a very interesting character, and he does a really good job in this movie. My favorite character in this movie is probably the um, end title sequence. Yikes. When I didn't have to watch this anymore. Man, everybody hated this movie. I, I, th- like, I thought there was good things that were going on yeah. in it. I just think there was just more. Th- I think there was like, you needed more connective tissue to actually keep me interested. I, I was very disjointed. I think- that I'm very... Like- I, I don't know what that says about me, but I'm very drawn to this movie. I just I don't get why James like not just James Spader, but everyone 
but they were just so underwhelmed with everything. Like when James Spader just like, like dr- drove off the highway and a dude <laughs> flew into his car, he was just like, "Oh shit, dude!" He's like, "What's up?" <laughs> He's like, "What's up, those?" Oh, like fuck. no reaction, like ever yeah. to anything. <laughs> Swan dive into the car. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, I didn't invite you in my car." He's like, "Wait, you weren't here before. You didn't yell taxi <laughs> first. You want to go to McDonald's?" <laughs> you want to go to McDouble? That would been kind of cool. No. No, it wouldn't. He killed a man. Yeah, he seems like to... Uh, that's, this is something I'd never considered either. But he seems to get off pretty scot-free with the whole driving. <laughs> oh, he gets off a lot. Yeah. He yeah. drove yeah. off a highway. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you're good. He's like, yeah, nah. He's yeah, crashing in the car. He's just crashing in the cars all willy nilly. Yeah, because there's yeah. definitely police in this movie, but not <laughs> once do they question what he's doing. Not yeah. once. The second he ran into that garbage truck, they would have gotten out, called their boss. Exactly, and, and he would have been what fu- the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> hey, boss! Some fucking guy hit us. <laughs> yeah. Ah, just call him a fucking asshole and move on. <laughs> They kind of do get away with a lot of this stuff. Ooh. Yeah, there's like there's like zero consequences for anyone's actions in this movie, and that's that one. Is of, that is one of the things that like really put me off too, because I'm like, not one person got arrested. I mean, like, are we doing spoilers? <laughs> yeah, we're in spoilers. Yeah, like fucking dude drives off a fucking highway into a fucking bus. <laughs> yeah. Sets the entire yeah, thing on fucking fire. Well, yeah, obviously, but. If they would have arrested him, it would have saved all those people that just <laughs> got fucking burnt to a fucking crisp. For you. Like, there's no consequences. It's like anyone can, it's like, I thought that I could wake up today and just crash into someone's fucking car, and then I, I wouldn't get in trouble. I almost did. I didn't. Die. Well, you could, yeah, you bump someone's car in your life and you get in trouble. Exactly. Like, yeah. It, yeah. there's zero consequences. <laughs> That's a very I'm fair point. Speed crash it like fucking brushing up against people. Yeah. Hitting bumpers. Like, oh, that's cool. Like, even in the yeah. beginning of the movie, like, this dude fucking macer- macerates a fucking man, and he he doesn't even get arrested in the hospital. He just yeah, he yeah. gets to leave. Yeah, he just gets to leave. And, like, that, it's like everything about that go accident up. was, like, clear cut his fault. Like, he's distracted. Exactly. Like, I'm. If that would have been any of us, if we t- turned a man to a fucking pork tenderloin, like, <laughs> yeah, we'd, be, we'd be fucking <laughs> in jail from the vehicular manslaughter. In jail forever. Exactly. Like, that's one of, that's my biggest fucking concern with this movie. No consequence. <laughs> that's a very, felt very felt. Yeah, he's absolutely not wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> All right. We're not defending anything now. Okay. This is, <laughs> this is not a defend it. It's. He should have been I'm in jail. Just, I'm picturing like the image of like him just swan diving yeah. through the <laughs> <laughs> like a torpedo. Yeah. yeah. Can we can we just add that in for uh for visual visualization? Yeah. Okay, Tyler, add that in post. Just, like, <laughs> just, just, torpedo. Just, he does because he really does just whoof. It looks like, it, it looks when he like when he shoots someone out of fucking cannon. Yeah, his like hands are at his side. Yeah. And he's just, like, goes <laughs> he's, just, he's just that picture of Ralph in the Simpsons meme. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's. I mean, case closed. It's he fucking killed a man. <laughs> like, and he doesn't go to jail. He doesn't even get questioned by the cops. Like yeah. you see the cops once in this movie, and they pulled over someone else. Who? Yeah, they're who, like, all right, yeah, they, yeah, they like shoo them away, like while they're doing their little car crash, ex- like show. Ex- exactly. Like, yeah, like, get like, get like, out of here! Get out of here! Like, like, a scram, you weirdos! Yeah. Like, there's a couple kids having a party in the woods or something. Exactly. Get out of here! Get out of here! You can't, you can't, you can't party up in Chickasaw State Park. Get out of here, you furries! Yeah, furry. I feel like furries would have been more acceptable than anything that happened in this fucking movie. Well, so back to the movie for a second. So we were talking about it. Yeah. Levon <laughs> and James start uh, hanging out, and they have this scene where, like, he has James ride his car, drive his car, and he just, like, picks up a prostitute and starts banging her in the back. And you just, like, get into this guy's psyche and see how whacked out he is. Oh, in the car wash, right? No, that was his wife in the car. 
Oh, yeah. that was his. Oh, okay. This is Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, yeah, yeah, so they just pick up the yeah. escort and are just and he's just like, well, I'll fuck you while I'm driving. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, again, no thinking he's going to James Crowley. He's like, oh, this crazy guy's going to like throw her out of the car or something. Yeah. He honestly doesn't like do. He really doesn't like have like stuff like that in his movies. Like this is honestly really in line with like a lot of his movies. I just expected some bad shit stuff to happen. Not just like not once. I think, it's like the absurdity of it, and the whole world is creating it. You're kind of that they want you to be enveloped in. I actually wanted to pick a Cronenberg movie, and I actually watched this movie like last week. And for the first one in a while, I was like, ah, I really like this movie. I think I don't want to tip everybody off and uh, pick this instead of like Dead Ringers or something. You know, you know what's honestly more weird? I would have been more on board if the movie was more disconnected to like. <laughs> The extreme, no, to like the extreme, or it was more like it was in this weird spot where it was disconnected, but it was following a linear story, so yeah. it just made it confusing. I would have rather the movie either be fucking absurd, none of it was connected, it just all seemed confusing, or it just be completely linear, not like it's like half and half because it's I just think- like it's like it's like it's a half measure on both ends. That's fair. I think I, w- I like it either way. I think both of those things would have worked for me. But so after this like prostitute part, they go and pick up his wife and they go on another little joy ride. And this is my actual favorite part. Uh, when they yes. find the car, the, the car crash scene on the side of the road. Yeah. And they get out of the car and it's just like, oh, the cinematography in this part. Like, this is this is the classic Cronenberg. It's like it's so, so nice. The scores like in its full full effect right here. And you get like this. This uh, the payoff to getting through all the wreckage of this car crash. Uh, when they open the door and it's the guy Colin Seagrass, it's the guy, his driver from the last show, and he did the next stunt on his own, recreating the who's it, Jane something, Jane Mansfield car crash. I thought this, yeah, part that was one, like yeah, dope. <clears throat> yeah, I thought this part was dope, like, He's like the oh. way, yeah, the way like they filmed it with like. That, like, his wife just sitting there, like, with the victim, like, the cranking, the, the lights. I thought this part was dope. Do you guys like this part? Or it was just kind of... I, I actually did... Okay, so I, I did, like... I liked it. Because of, the, like, the way it looked and, like, how it was shot, like you were saying. But I... God, I hated this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? Okay, so... Okay, let me... Let me... Let me... So... I hate the story of this movie, but I, I think I like the sound design is very really good. The score is really good. The cinematography is like honestly top notch in it. But, yeah, like, like the production. Actually. Yeah, the, 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 pr- production. the production of this movie is top notch. Everything else, the, actually, no, the acting is very good too. From James Spader, I think James Spader and Holly Hunter are actually top tier in this movie. Ugh, but God, God, I hated this movie. Getting <laughs> damned. This is the kind. This is the kind of movies I find myself gravitating towards most. I don't know what that says about me. That you're shit person, and that you should be hung. Probably. Uh, but <laughs> this scene, I think this scene's dope. Man. They go do the go to the car wash afterwards, like you guys were saying. Oh yeah, yeah okay, that's when they. Think. Yeah. Von starts porking his wife in the back seat. Boy, have we all been but, there? Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, I, yeah, I think my next, my my favorite sex scene is coming up actually. Yeah, that's when Von invites James to come visit a tattoo artist who tattoos car emblems on Von's body. That's not my favorite sex like, scene, but I think you should get one too, James. And he gets a little tattoo on his thigh, and then cut to so cut to them sitting in the car, and. Non's character. You complete, like, no, you skipped over my favorite sex scene. You're waiting. Oh, I thought that's what he was about to get to. No, yeah, no, no, you're, no, 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 no. That's not even my favorite. <laughs> no, I'm talking about sex the one where he fucks the girl's fucking leg wound. Oh, God. That's after this. Is it? Is it? Yep. <laughs> no, he it has to prove to the, no, it is after this. He had to prove to the aunt he was still straight. Are you sure? You're talking about, yeah, you're talking about when he goes to like the car dealership with her? Yeah, that's way before that. No, yeah. this is after this. Are you sure? Positive. Oh no, I read my notes in order. Oh, well, maybe I like I wrote down like a sketch of like how to like follow. Yeah, because it's say, yeah, because it says fuck the wound and then full frontal right after. Yeah, and the then ball, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, the shaped wound. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. The car stuff happens earlier, but like the other stuff happens later, pretty sure. Right? They get tattooed. Yeah, yeah, because then no, they... that happens. Yeah, that, that doesn't that happen directly after, does it? Pretty much. Yeah, but the the gay stuff happens way later. No, the gay stuff happens right after the tattoo. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he's like in the car uh, and he's like sucking on his like we're already heading towards the end of the movie. Yeah, what? Well, anyways, I like the the part where he fucks the chick's leg wound. <laughs> in the yeah, car dealership. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I was just like, can you even like do that? Well, like, there's these pe- They're just trying to like show you these people are like so like sexually discombobulated, almost like like their fucking brains are fried from these like car crashes. I think that's what it's really trying to show you. Yeah, but it's like after watching this movie, like people that like feet aren't that weird anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, just saying. Yeah, Dan Snyder. Yeah, <laughs> he's still weird. Those are kids' feet. Yeah, yeah. he's still weird. Yeah, but... Quentin Tarantino. He's a he's yeah. a he's a Quentin he's Tarantino's a, he's still a, weird, but at least he wasn't children. Yeah, Rex Ryan. Yeah. So yeah, they get some tattoos. Sweet and. Then they fuck them. Yeah, and then they fuck their tattoos. <laughs> and then <laughs> their tattoos fuck. Yeah, he'll rub our cocks against him. Like James bros. was thinking about what his wife told him about or made him think about. And all of a sudden, <laughs> someone's getting bent over. Oops. Oops. Well, we don't see who gets bent over. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, I must, literally... have, I must have blocked that out then entirely then. <laughs> Yeah, he like fl- he literally flips him over and like pulls his pants down. That's when it cuts. Oh, okay, yeah, I must have missed that part then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he like literally like flips him over and like um, takes his pants off. Yeah, I, yeah, because I, 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 yeah, you came in while I was watching that part, and then you went downstairs. And I think I just like blocked the rest of that scene out of my mind. <laughs> Spider no! I was like Ultron. Yeah, I was like, why did you do it, James? <laughs> why, James? Why? <laughs> you were in. You were in the blacklist. Remember the blacklist? Aww. So I think this is just supposed to like show like the way it's almost like a power move. I think they're trying to like show it as like a power move too. Yeah, Where, like this is him like retaliating for like fucking his wife. Well, I mean, banging any dude in the ass is a power move. Like it kind of seemed like a dominance thing to me. Yeah, as far as like in the framework of all this. Yeah, you know, I mean, I go downtown Lester Brown once a month. Yikes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ain't <laughs> well, well, then. All right. So, uh, yeah, so this movie kind of just moves itself right along, though. Yeah, yeah it really does, yeah. It really kind of just, like, that's, like, the end of the movie, basically. <laughs> yeah, then, like, you get to this, like, pursuit where James is driving with his wife. And Vaughn's like waiting for him, and this little whole high speed uh, car car pat car chase pursues where I mean, where Vaughn intentionally crashes his car, mm-hmm. and over the under the landing on the passenger bus below the underpass. Oh God, yeah. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Two scoops of fried green tomatoes. I thought that shit. Was also, did he, like, so did they plan a high speed chase in the highway? Or I think Vaughn like, was. Vaughn did. Yeah. He was just like, I'll, I'll, they'll show up eventually. It'll happen. It always <laughs> happens. Every day for three years. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about it? Get you, Mr. Ballard. You want to, yeah. I'm going to fu- gonna fuck your wife again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty impressive move, too, to just be able to snipe his car out like that. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about swan diving. His fucking car swan dove off the fucking highway into a bus. I thought it was dope. I mean... (laughs) Yeah. So... Ah. It's almost like the cult leader dying when he dies, though, and then you have the... The new cult leader. Yeah, not really though. It just kind of like it seems like the cars like glorify after that. Like they was talking about. Yeah. Like with like his foot, like with the Lincoln itself. Then you have Holly Hunter's character and the other girl with the leg brace and the bulbous shaped scar on her leg, finding their way to the car to go fucking that thing. Yeah. Also, you're Let... telling me that car survived? I <laughs> guess. Yep. Yeah, for the plot. Well, that's just off a highway into a bus. 
catches no, fire and explodes. <laughs> so yeah. That's good. We can. That's a. What's a fixer upper? The yeah. frame is not bent. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention all the tomato soup that's probably plastered onto it too. Whatever. Well, that's fine. Fire would have destroyed. Yeah. You, you figured like it would have been impounded, you know, indefinitely because it's a fucking murder weapon. Oh, but wasn't you know, it like wasn't it impounded though, and like it just ended yeah, up in the? Yeah, that that makes, makes, no, no, I mean, I mean, I don't know who. who I mean, I like knows? what. The, we could debate the plausibility of the car still being See, in the state it was in, but like where it ended up, I don't think is that unheard. This of. is more where I go back to where like it was. In such a middle ground where, like, this story wasn't, like, it wasn't so batshit crazy, I'm like, or I can dis- I can suspend my disbelief for it. It, like, it felt like it was like, oh, this is a real world. So I'm like, well, that shouldn't happen in the real world. Yeah. Like, if they made it just fucking, like, if, like, oh, this world is fucking insane, then I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll believe that the cars are fucking still going and all this crazy bullshit. Yeah. But the fact that like they give the appearance that like it's a it's not it's not like that, it's like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. They should have taken the frogs from Magnolia and put them in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the car crashes happen. That's how yeah. the car crashes happen. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, the goodness. effect of Von dying is not persuaded. Uh, James or his wife's character, as you see them trying to reenact the same stunt with their own cars at the end. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't. Leading to a uh, collision off, off into a grass meeting again, where to, his, to both of their dismay, James' character finds her unharmed, and other than some superficial energies, and he says, maybe the next one, as he. Just gives it to her right there on the grass median. Except there won't be a next one because they're both going to fucking jail. Yeah, these people would just be maybe. I don't know. Apparently, everyone's avoided the authorities. Yeah, there's like no cops in this movie. So if someone's like, "Hey, someone hit me on the highway," and then the cop shows up, like, "Why is there an empty car in the middle of the lane? Why is that car smoking? Why are those two banging?" <laughs> that is very true. A lot oh, of these well. things kind of just. Make it by for the purpose of the movie. Because it's stupid. I don't know. I like it. I know. Because <laughs> you're stupid. I like the composition of this movie. <laughs> it's whatever. I know. He could call me stupid and then pick definitely baby. <laughs> I know. That's why that's why I can get over that. Yeah, yeah I, that's why I can that's why I can do these things. But I think there's a lot to like about this movie. I think this movie's insanely ahead of its time. Um, maybe even still now. I, th- I think there's this kind of like a new light on this movie. It just got its Blu-ray release like two weeks ago. Mm. It's kind of being talked about a little bit more than it used to. Uh, I think this was more... more I, a lot of people probably had trouble seeing this movie. But yeah, I like this movie a lot. And <clears throat> issues aside... I think I think it's pretty dope. It's pretty Cronenbergian, and I'm all behind it. Oh, so now we're making up our own. Yeah, we're, we're gonna make up our own verbs now, huh? You, you never heard someone say Lovecraftian? Yeah, but that sounds way no. cooler than Cronenbergian. Not really that. Yeah, Cronenbergian sounds more Jewish. So anybody else got some some hard gripes on this movie before yeah. you move away from that? Yeah. James it. Spader should have said, whoa, at least once, and he never did. <laughs> like, act fucking surprised. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty casual throughout this whole movie. Like, yeah. yeah. Cool as a cucumber. Shouldn't you numb fuck? <laughs> whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> a car crash. <laughs> oh, there's a guy in my seat all of a sudden. No, that's weird. Oh, a close friend just got a burn like a barbecue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's get into fucking the gradings. Wait, did anybody like? Is there anything dope anybody has to say about this movie before the we get into the, the, sound, the, sound, yeah. the score? Was fucking awesome. Yeah. I noticed yeah. that right away. I yeah, loved it. I, 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 yeah, and the guy flying through the windshield. That's <laughs> uh, that's about it. <laughs> All right, then. I guess we'll get into the the degradings. Um, I'll go first. I think I'm the one that likes this movie. Yep. All right. So, (laughs) 
A lot of things I like about this movie. I really love the score. I love the cinematography. I love the world created. This is all very, very stock Cronenberg stuff that I'm going to be in for every time. Uh, this is probably my third favorite movie from him. Not much else to say. Uh, a lot of problems aside that I think we kind of ran over pretty good. And I'm going to give this, I'm probably going to come in a lot higher than you guys, but I think I'm going to give this, I think, a pretty fair rating. I'm going to give it a 7.6. Yeah. Tom. Oh, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so this movie, I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" Like, it's like right off the bat when I that told dude you torpedoes that. this dude torpedoes through a car, and like <laughs> people, every time you see a woman, she's just like, "Hey, look, here's my titty." Like every time, like, and you got a car. Like, I'm like, what? What? Like, what is supposed to be? story going on for like a while <laughs> but yeah it was definitely shot very well though like oh, put yeah. together very well um it did look good it sounded great um i'm gonna give it a five and even five all right ryan uh there's definitely things i like enjoyed but i just think from like a technical standpoint like there's just like or not even like but like a storytelling standpoint it just didn't it just was like a half measure on like both fronts of being either linear or just discombobulated where like if they pulled the trigger on either one of those i think i would have enjoyed it more uh with that, pretty much like that's my biggest gripe when it comes to this um i'll give it a 6.1 neat it passes school <laughs> um yeah like everyone said this the production of this movie is fantastic it's top notch between the signs, uh, the sound, the score, the cinematography, and all that, and the acting. Um, I love James Spader. Um, he's he's really cool, especially when he can take do a serious role and do a role like this and do something like The Office. He's he's great in all of them. Um, but boy, was I just waiting for this movie to be over? <laughs> Have you ever seen the penis? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's I can see where they were going with this movie and it's again it's um it's a good people would like this movie probably i don't know maybe and i don't know tyler does so i mean somebody out there has to it's got uh, a criteria someone's gotta like it exactly so i mean if they if they put the money into releases like almost 20 years later um yep. actually more than 20 years later actually it's actually getting a 4k from a uk company yeah. the same it got delayed, but I'm just too much of a sin for criteria that I bought that instead. Oh, I can't, I can't overlook that. So I'm, I'm actually going to do a, a solid six point nine. Oh, yeah, mostly Ooh. because it's a sex movie and it's a sex rating. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that gives us a grand total of twenty five point six. Still not the lowest rated movie though. No, not even close. Yay. Yeah. Ooh, that work out to like a six point like six point oh. two three. See, I around there in the sixes. Originally, I was gonna give this like a four point three. It's too nice of like a that's too yeah. much of like a real movie to give it something that low. Yeah, you like I mean? on my notes, I wrote that down, and then after like thinking about it today, that's why I like to watch my movies the night prior, so I can kind of have a day to think about it. Yeah. I was like, I can't, I can't realistically give this movie lower than like a like a seven like a like a six it's like when i see people yeah. give like movies that they saw in the theaters like like a four or like low like lower than it's like you guys just like have not seen a bad movie like you can't give a movie a four that has like excellent cinematography yeah and, like acting <laughs> Just because, just because they're the good cinematographer doesn't mean nothing. No, job but like, writer gets a break. No, but like, all right. For example, I'm gonna use like something like The Irishman. For example, I don't like that movie at all. I think it's boring. I don't think there's it anything like. I don't think there's anything that like shocking about it. I don't like. I think the writing's very mundane. But like, I'm not gonna like look past that. It's like it's still a well acted movie. Like it's a it's excellently shot movie. Like all the sets look great. Like every like, there's movies that just do not have these things. That is so like, true. you can't you can't just like take the craftsmanship and just like discount that completely. One hundred percent. Yeah, I yeah. do. 
<laughs> I would. I probably would not recommend this to anyone. Uh, I would, this is a very like, like close. I would recommend. Yeah. It would have to be like Someone if I know you're in for cars. something specific. I'd be like, oh, I know what you should watch. Actually, yeah, like I, I would never give this like to like my mom or like someone on my work. Yeah, like, like funny. Like, a, a general recommendation. I would not give this one yeah. out. I, oh, I agree, Tyler. Funny that you uh, mentioned recommending it to your mother. I actually did recommend it to my mom. <laughs> because my mom has been asking me, "Hey, what are you want doing for the podcast each week?" And I told there's her, a guy at my work that re- that watched it too, and his wife said I need therapy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I told her to watch this movie. Um, so ho- hopefully she does and gets back to me. She's watched uh, a pretty fair amount of, mo- of the movie so far. That we've done. Yeah, probably not Spiral. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she she <laughs> couldn't find Spiral. So yeah, you yeah. really can't find. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, that's like the highest rated movie. You need to watch Find yeah. It somehow. Yeah. It's the third highest now, actually. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah. third. Uh, yeah, Mr. Nobody second. Magnolia is one. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Um, but, Ryan. Speaking wait, speaking of recommendations. We're yeah. going to do this now. Yeah. Okay, so I got two because one of them I talk about every show, and it's a huge cop-out to use it. So I'm going to give you two. So the, the obvious one, it's a movie that also deals with the ambiguation of sex, uh, trauma, Fallout, everything like and that involved. That's David Lynch's Blue Velvet. Yep. And I, that's legitimately, I think, if you like this, you'd like that movie also. Yeah, but, which I love that movie, and I, but I hated this movie. <laughs> but, but anyways, uh, the other, the other uh, more uh, less lesser known pick that I don't talk about all the time. It's also a movie that's uh, very like very extreme in the same way this does, and it's a movie that doesn't really have like a eight point A to point B storyline, much like this one also. And it's about uh, a day in the life of a group of teens where it does the same thing. It just shows them doing like what unsuit what it just American around. Pie. No, no, it's not some goofy shit like that. It, it falls around a group of Break. teens like doing <laughs> <laughs> doing their own thing that some people might find offensive or be disgusted yep. by. Yep. And Definitely. that is the nineteen ninety five movie Kids. From Larry Clark, <laughs> early Chloe Savini movie. Oh fuck you, dumb. And and Rosario Dawson. They're both oh, wow. younger. Young yeah. Oh, nice. big surprise. She's he, everywhere. She's in a movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So those are my recommendations, and that was Crash. So we'll pass it on to Ryan. What are we watching next week? Please, something good. I had a movie that I was gonna pick, and then we had this. I'm like, well, I need something that's gonna be like a little fun. We can, we can. It's not super serious, but probably my favorite cult classic movie that isn't uh, Clerks, uh, and that's gonna be 1979's The Warrior. Oh, or the wow. Warriors. Oh, the Warriors. Oh, the Warriors. oh okay. Ooh. I've actually never seen that movie. Neither. I've never Neither seen this movie. Ever. Watch it. Yeah. I've yeah. evaded this movie for a long time. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. I, I know it's funny. I played the video game, but never watched the movie. Yeah, I've evaded this movie for a long time. I think yeah. I've never watched it. Oh, that billions of there's billions of references to it in pop culture. There really is. Yeah. 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 Oh, Dexter. Di- Dexter's dad's in it. <laughs> John Lithgow? Oh, I was thinking about from Dexter's Lab. Oh. I was like, whoa. Whoa. Why yeah. did they do that? That's fucking nuts. There's Walter room in there. All right. So I guess we will t- all see everyone next week for another exciting adventure into the world of 1979 movies. And not this piece yeah. of garbage we had to watch this week. Oops. One more step. One more jab. One more jab. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It was, it I was, was trying to be different. Yeah, stop. Have you ever, have you ever sucked a penis? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that note, we'll see everyone next week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.